and since Fnatic's picking up bat riders, most likely Trixie bat. I would really like to see a bat versus Shadow Fiend matchup because that was kind of the original counter. And now we're going to see a tiny, except a tiny that does not have the backup of a Wisp. Fnatic are one of the few teams that still like to do this. Yeah. yeah. Well, that said, though, you could get some amazing dunks pre dagger, toss in the Earth Shaker, and ba bam. It's uh, instant cast, so it's very, very hard to actually deal with against something like that. I'm wondering how but passive damn. though they want to play with this. Like, is this one of these games where you want to throw a Lich in towards the mix and then just hold the lane back? Because you could still then technically run a dual lane in the mid up against the Ten SF. Seconds okay. Remaining. Yeah. And, and try doing that. Then you can have your Trixie off lane and your Earthshaker rotation in. Five if you can get your remaining. Fissure out, your Frost Blast on top of that, then you're going to find the space for Tiny to come in for his for his combination Reserve as well. Time. And then you just need someone who's got a decent escape mechanism on the top lane for your main carry. That's, that's where my mind would instantly go with this, because I don't see Fnatic saying, hey, let's just run the Tiny on the safe lane. Um, SF's going to get really fat and probably do, do more damage than us, and the Tiny can't have the jump-in option that you normally say that you can never count out a Tiny Wisp combo. That comes up all the time from commentators. But without the Wisp, Tiny is one of these guys where you'll see him coming from a mile away. So Fnatic's EG will be able to prepare and control. To I wonder if we're actually going to take a uh, maybe a detour from the standard carry Tiny. Maybe you get a Blink Dagger, because... That's kind of the original way to play the Tiny. Uh, it was a mid-Tiny, you get a quick blink, and then you go around killing people. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to remind people that since Blink Dagger got buffed with the lack of 75 mana cost, that's actually something that taxed Tiny quite a bit. The, the, I don't think the, the only downside, though, is the Tiny. Like, if he's not finding Rune Control and running a bottle, Ten he seconds, basically maybe. runs dry after, like, right, one, right. Or, one, one or two games. Essentially, yeah. yeah. So, I, Five because of that, remaining. I don't think it's a, a very popular. And then if, if he had some help, like, if you actually brought, like, a Visage into this game and you end, end up having, like, familiars going around with the Tiny looking for ganks, then it would be possible. And then it's, it's simply, like, grab one kill, move back to farming, you just get yourself up to your next big item, you find Dragon, and then you find another kill, maybe possibly two, and then... You go up to your next big item. Mm -hmm. Like if you just do it that way, where you always just try and keep the advantage with one kill here, one kill there, then it could work for Fnatic. Yeah. Just I just want to say one more thing about Tiny, because we normally don't see it like a, a blind Tiny Team pick without bad. the Wisp. I think Tiny's horrible against Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend obviously a range hero, so it won't cra pop the crabby exterior much. Um, the minus armor aura helps a lot, and more importantly, the Requiem of Soul. It's what's it, 50% in Ten terms of damage reduction. Remaining. That's your base damage. And guess what? Tiny has nothing but base damage. Is Five that correct, or does he have? Remaining. From his growth, yeah, it's nothing yes. but base damage, base right? Damage. So yeah. you're essentially cutting da Tiny's damage output by half. Right. Reserve time. Every ultimate. Regardless of BKB. Regardless of BKB, and uh, regardless of actually whether SF survives the fight, right? If he dies, that's also like a mini Requiem. Yep. Yeah. So I just don't think Tiny's a great pick this game. Also, it makes your lane quite predictable, because essentially we're going to see like a Tiny safe lane, and then... You know, you could plan around that. Why not Pebbles mid? Pebbles mid? Yeah. Fanatics I think he's gonna get out to lane by Shadow Fiend. Yeah, it, because now, you, unless you throw a line in mid, like a line up on the top as a, as a solo, that's the only that way, other way to do it. You need you need a bigger lane controller than Lion in mid, because you're not gonna zone out the SF with that. The sad thing is, we're probably gonna see Lion mid. Like Ten Fnatic, seconds, they always run know. something mid. Honey does it. Yeah, yeah, he does uh, Lion mid. We yes. <laughs> Except Radiant Bruno, he doesn't pick. run mid when he protects yeah, yeah. lanes. I put three people on the Ooh, jungle. Ooh, this jungle. Fanatics Welcome to aggro pick. try. Welcome to full-on aggro try. Undying, SD, and a Marana pickup. Fnatic's early control is one Fissure. If that goes wrong, they're losing people. They're losing people bad. But thing, like one Fissure is all you really need, right? Like you block people off and that's pretty much it. Mm. So as opposed to with No Tales recent games too, we trust him. Yeah. Yeah. But this Ten is uh, seconds remaining. Yeah. It's it's still a big question mark if Fnatic actually have enough Five stability in remaining. their lineup to survive like early undying harassment and then into what's gonna be like a, a low strength strength hero. Oh. The there you go. For Fahani. So he's actually gonna be a support lion. <laughs> Rascal can celebrate. Again, though, I, I'm a big fan of Shadow Fiend versus the Death Prophet matchup. Not in lane. I think Death Prophet have the edge there. But in terms of mid game right clicks, Shadow Fiend is one of those heroes that just like, yep, I'm going to stick on you. I'm going to right click, and you're going to get killed. Okay. I, I, I don't think they have issues dealing with the zombie house, considering that the, once the Acceptor comes up, Aero's going to hit it in two hits. 
Never yeah. dies, you know. Prepare for battle. I, I just think that Shadow Fiend is very well matched uh, in this particular lineup against what Fnatic's got. Mm. But we'll see. Yeah. Here we get to roll out to their lanes, and uh, as far as the aggro trial okay, lane goes, nice name. I'm not seeing the guys move directly north, because it, like at this point we do have Mason preparing himself for the off lane, but PPD like he's just planning on a ward here, but they're not they're not moving up to plant some aggressive wards to see what Fnatic are doing, because I thought maybe they would come up, look for like a semi level uh, like level one fight, and then try and plant a ward up on this north lane behind the tier one tower. It's just not really happening at the moment, so. Uh, Fnatic, I think they can keep control of this top lane quite easily. And then maybe they just have to have Mason a little bit more... Ex oh, wait, what is this? <laughs> 30 seconds um, Swift Rage, indeed. Um, I mean, now you see a mid backstab. Wait, point, guys. wait, that, that, that shouldn't even be happening anymore. Is that the guy from Monsters, Inc.? Like... <laughs> yeah, that is actually him, right? It looks like it. Okay. No, but is, is, is it meant to be a war looking for the backstab of the mid no. no. Or is it just because I thought that wasn't possible anymore to actually screw that up? Because they changed the hotkey the for it. Begins. Right, but if you didn't get the the memo that they changed the hotkey for it, you just put it down on the ground like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this case, one ward's wasted and the other ward's watching the bottom rune, so they have no potential to put an aggro ward behind the tier 1 tower and see what Fnatic's movement is up there. So they're basically doing this top lane blind. Yes. Which, uh, for Fnatic's side, they have a ward right in the lane. That's nice. No has been doing this three games in a row now, just putting a Quelling Blade and just cutting a, basically a pathway of freedom to himself uh, for multiple avenue of fissure traps. He essentially... I, here's the thing, it, it's really nice if you're dueling it against a solo offlane because you could grab the fissure and then essentially it gives you the kill. Whereas against a tri lane, especially a tri lane that has a Marana with the leap, you're not really going to accomplish much. So I think the calling blade investment in this game might not really pay off. I'm kind of with you on that one, man. I want, I want to watch that bottom lane too, because right now it seems like Trixie, like Mr. Boots first, is not zoning out Universe completely, because obviously Universe having the stick to start with knows he can at least have like some burst of mana and regeneration coming back his way. But Trixie right now seems to really be Man. controlling yeah. Universe out of this lane. Using that boost of speed uh, to his advantage, forcing him away and perhaps getting a couple denies. Batrider really winning this lane. We don't think Puck's going to die here, but we've seen some crazy things happening in one view. No, normally he shouldn't die. Yeah. But when you're when you're suddenly level one, you don't have a phase shift available. Like you got to time your orb properly to get yourself away from those attacks, and sometimes you got to cut that a little bit short. And that's when a firefly bat rider can just chase you down. Yeah, he's got two, so he's fine now. Oh. Uh, in terms of the spell that Undying's getting for this, it's not going to stop Trixie from having a crack at him though. <laughs> he just lights the ground on fire and just tries to force out phase shifts or orbs. He could chase after this orb if he wants. He does have the boots. In fact, he will. Face is down. We might see the... No, he's no. not going to. No creeps here. The Firefly is also running out. He's got 10 stick charges behind him. Yeah. So all least he can do is just burn down the wave so Puck has to try and battle under under his own tower. Right. Yeah, look at Trixie. He's actually taking, taking... All the way back to that tier 1 tower too. Meanwhile, on the top lane, it looks like we have a creep cut to the left, getting themselves a little bit of experience. Are they going to make a go? Oh. Yes, they, in fact, they will. They have a lot of creep going on. There's a fissure, oh. but it blocks the creeps. Uh, a rare mistake from No-Tail. Generally, he's quite good in it. USE server, perhaps? Not sure. Yeah, we're, we're playing US East again. Okay. Yeah, but that's, that's one of those things, man. Like, a fissure can, can make it or break it for you. Yeah. And in that case, it broke it. It could have been the death of PPD straight away. But then again, it's really difficult to kill off an Undying in the early stages. Like, he was up at around 850 life points yeah. when they initiated him on that point. So you throw the Fissure out, and it's more like a nibble on the heel. He but probably would have got, like, a 2-3 man decay off before he died, and that would have gave him, like, I don't know, 100 more HP. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no tell is still waiting in the tree lines. If EG is up for this, they could actually try and scout it out. I'm actually kind of surprised they're not looking for this because Snowtail has been making a very big habit of late to do this kind of stuff, like with this little like railroad track out the back to pass freedom kind of thing. Yeah, now PPD is looking for it because they've got to look and see where the fidgets are coming from. I don't want to say it's worth putting an observer ward up in the lane because obviously they wasted one beforehand and that would just be really cruel. Uh, but if they could have one close that could keep tabs on where the Earthshaker is moving, uh -oh. it's well worth it. Well, the thing is, he's, he's spent so much time in here. It's like a rat sewer system. He is. Yeah, he's got the, the map of that thing down. Meanwhile, Zai is just walking through blind. You notice on bottom lane, Trixie actually got zoned out of the lane. He's having to go all the way back to base. He purchased up a bottle, but uh, Universe was able to find just a couple of good orbs to harass him out. 
So, uh, Universe got control back at that bottom lane. And it's gonna, now gonna take the experience advantage too. Actually, Zai's gonna have sight on no tail. If you fire off that disruption, the arrow's definitely gonna guarantee a go. If we're dying, you know, coming in with the tombstone, they should be able to get the kill. It's a tombstone level up here for PPD. And I, I apologize, I kept calling him PDD last game. He's pretty dug, I know. Really? Yeah. No, not really. Like, PPD is as far as thug as it gets. I like how um, all these creeps are getting confused on the top lane with the fissure. They just, like, blocked them up. So they all just stood there for a moment, looking at each other, because obviously the way the new fissure works... Mm -hmm. the but way they're going to the get the uh, creep deny that they want, so... And how's Artizi looking to me? Because right now his CS is really not being contested at all. He's got a haste rune up his bottle, so he's he's quite comfortable in that middle lane. An attempted gank would just fail, because he'd just run him out. Uh, but he's walking around with 1,000 gold now, 4 minutes and 40 seconds into the game. So it looks like we're going standard Arteezy. Yeah. His hand of Midas, movement in front. But who really comes out on top of this mid lane when you've got Arteezy getting a lot of money up up his kit, and then he gets a hand of Midas as well. Can Hani keep up with the presence this Shadow Fiend's going to bring? I don't think he can. And that's actually the beauty of the EG Shraf. They might look like they're running an offensive trial lane, but if you look at it, they're getting a great deal of experience because the pool to the left. And because you're running an offensive trial lane against Fnatic, it basically traps the Fnatic support on the top. And if you're not ganking an SF that's beating your mid laner, you will never actually Speaking win that Speaking of lane. gank, man, you got SF for that haste and He's coming down for Trixie. Now, Trixie tried to go already over-aggressive on Universe. Dream Call's gonna be used and first Trixie will be held in position. Blood. This will be your first blood first going the way soul. of uh, of EG. Yeah, it's, it's a great draft coming out from EG. They basically win every single lane after that one gank. And of course, Shadowfiend with the haste rune. He's not even losing any time going back to the mid lane. The top lane is getting uh, a lot of farm on Mason. And Mason, despite being only level 3, he has a killing potential Radiance whenever that Shadow Demon gets attack. that disruption off. <laughs> Man, Hani's trying to force it in the middle lane. Like you, you say, like, nothing is really lost for Arteezy. That's why Hani threw the ulti out to see if at least he can do some damage to this tier 1 tower in mid. But for the negligible, like, 129, 130, 131 da damage, sorry, mm -hmm. it's so negligible it makes no difference whatsoever. And now SF, 6 minutes in, has Hand of Midas. Yep. Uh, first blood will do that for you. He's already got the boots, so he's not even a naked Midas. At this point, Arteezy could look towards to stack the big camp if he wants to and accelerate his farm. In any case, if you don't send Gang Party to the mid lane, Arteezy will destroy you. And here comes Fly. But it, Fly in itself, making this rotation is very dangerous because, well, your top lane suddenly don't have a range support now dealing with uh, the, the possible dive coming in. And if you look at the farm on Arrow, he's got 12 CS. He's not going to give you that big uh, farm that you really need him to have. Doesn't help to the fly smoke rotation. He's done the full loop de loop to come in towards this middle lane, hoping to probably find Arteezy just sitting a little bit too far up in that mid. But he's checking out the cams, looking to see when, when Arteezy is going to come down. But Arteezy already found the easy cam, so he goes down a little bit deeper anyway. So he's, he's not finding anything for this rotation out. If he actually shows himself to do this observer ward uh, right, right next to the mid lane, like he could just straight up killed how far is he gonna walk down for that one all right so it's just it's just in this little line here so if he walks inside that box he'll show himself mm -hmm. okay he's but, actually okay. He's gonna block the stack that's cool it's only gonna stop Arteezy to a point yeah like th this could actually just bite him in the ass the other way like if, if Arteezy gets his his camps blocked up his next thing is just rotating out to kill because if he can't find the farm Ooh, like efficiently no. that's the only other thing he would do okay these two supports are very very, very close to them, each other. The disruption being forced out, so Catcher's gonna miss as well. I mean, even if they got the disruption off, the Fissure would have thrown off the arrow timing, so probably would not have worked. But uh, the, here's the thing, though. EG doesn't need to do anything on the top lane. They're winning all of the lane. There's There's gonna fissure, be Avalanche, the disruption actually coming after. Trying to protect Mason from that, uh, from that attack from Era. It's fine, yeah. They, they don't need to do anything. They're slowly passively winning the game. This is kind of the scary thing about EG. They're out drafting their opponents, so you have Dyer's the players that can outplay their opponents. Attack. This team uh, might look pretty scary oh, coming at TF4. I think Zai found that little path up there which allows them to get through the rear. Now PPD, he's underneath the tower, puts the tombstone down, they have to use the Dyer's fortification. And no tell, he's really can't make up his mind right now. He's got mana, well actually he's got a stick charger which he could use to get the fissure up and running, but there's just no reason to go in there and kill. Like you put a soul rip over an ear who's now being surrounded by the undead. 
Mason's looking for a position to get that arrow off, but they're bringing in some extra help. PBD, he's actually tower. blocked off by the fish of Trixie. He's going down for Zion's going to disrupt him up, but Fly, he's rotated over on PPD. The arrow comes up, miss on everything, and there's going to be a toss up. PPD will go down to the Earthshaker. And Trixie, who now does have Lance, who is trying to catch up to Mason. Leap is off cooldown, though, so they won't get the kill on the Mirana. Consider that a win for EG. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit EG biased here, but attack. the fact that Hani was forced to rotate up top, never got to the fight, Arteezy getting some precious damage on the tier one. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Universe getting free farm with the face boot and getting damage on top one, tier one. And then you have Byrider who came in for the kill, but didn't even get it. So Dyer's not much gold going tower. towards his lane. Might have another one. Era disrupted up right now. Catcher as well on top, and the arrow hits perfectly. PBD just decays him up. The support is nearby, but. It can't save him. Yeah. The, the Lion just can't do anything to save him in that position unless all three EG players line up for an Earth Spike. So I, I feel that right now EG is utilizing the map a lot more. The hero just gives them a lot more. And here comes what I call a, a catch-up Midas. So with the Midas, he will be able to keep up with Arteezy. Death Prophet is one of the few heroes in the game that can flash farm as quickly. Tunnels are being used against him, man. PBD has got to drop this tombstone. No tower with the Fissure, lassoing Trixie back, uh, lassoing PBD back up again. With excess, four heroes being committed to kill off PPD. And he will go down, but Murano takes the tier one tower, and the bottom tower is down no to 300 life points at the moment. No tells like almost died to zombie trying to kill off the uh, tombstone. Not bad. I mean, they really need a four to actually kill him. Here comes the mid lane. Arteez is zoning Honey away from the lane. Yeah, if they don't chain sun the, the Undying, Dyer's Undying just gets a four man to K off, and you're not killing him. Attack. Bottom lane, can he get the denial off Honey? He Dyer's attempted it, but Puck gets the last hit. So there's already two towers in 10 minutes that have now gone the way of EG. That injection of money has actually shot them up to about 6,000 gold advantage. Doesn't need the experience at this point. It's just getting those big items Dyer's up already. Like Arteezy's running ahead of Minus, and now 10 minutes in, picks up the Ogre Club too. He's got plus. Uh, 1,000 life points, and where's your damage coming from right now? Right now, it's actually only the crop. Yeah. The thing about Cropolis is she doesn't necessarily need level 11 because every point into Witchcraft helps her damage output by a pretty significant amount. But once she does get level 11, and you have like a lasso, a hex, and a fissure, yeah, you can actually kill that shadow beam, BKB or not. So uh, they they have the damage output. The question is, what is keeping Hani alive? Because right now, Hani has 900 HP, 4 armor, Schmuck. Yeah, I mean, there's a Fissure, but that's pretty much it. Hani really needs an HP item, maybe a Yule set there. They're going to jump on Zai right now, but what they don't know is Universe is also coming up with that Blink Dagger. Look at that 3-man coil, which he will do so. Follows up with the Silence on Nortel. All the hit on Fly, as well as Nortel. Is he going to open himself away from this one? He just gets the kill. It was the Pluck only triggering out. Then Mason comes through with the Starfall. Fnatic lose all three on top lane, with the SD disrupting himself up to protect himself at the same time. Doing more with less. I mean, the, the coil coming in, the, the blink dagger already online, and on the bot lane, Trixie finally going back to the bot lane and, and perhaps pressure the tower. They're not really getting any trades favorably. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that Fnatic yesterday played out of their mind. Today, they're the first game against Alliance. Insane play, but it feels like in this game, they're just getting severely outclassed. Ah. No, they're not finding the key items to like push into it, and there's no real plan B on this one. The Bat Rider Blink Dagger is a plan A. Now they jump in middle lane. Yeah. Hani with the Rift. He's got himself an Invis rune. Guess raise one, Dyer's guess raise two, but both He's falling stray off. And Universal just TP himself out, filling. He's a little bit too deep in. I mean, if you're EG, you're like, okay, we miss a kill. That's fine. We're going to get some damage on the tier one. And Eventually, they're going to break that tier one. That's going to open Roshan up for EG if they choose to do so. It's meant to be the other way, though. Like, yeah. you've got a Krob ulti over on Fnatic with the Batrider Firefly and an ES Fissure block. It should be Fnatic being the ones to bring down Roshan first. But they can't do it when the tier one tower is lost. Yep. And meanwhile, because the top lane has done such a great job shutting down Era, now that he's got free farm, it's, it's catch up free farm. It's not. You know, he, he, where's his point booster? Where's his drums? He is so far behind compared to the Shadow Puck is trying to catch up to Trixie right now. Dream Coil is available, he's going to use it. So Trixie just tries to TP himself out of this one. SD can't reach him for the disruption. He's too far on the other side of the river, so Zai could not reach. And a smart TP back out to safety by Trixie this time around. I think he would have been fine if he walked up to the Dragons as well, but breaking the Coil under Ancient Camp may not be the best idea. Not, not the safest thing yeah. in the world. But again, you know, like, if nothing really happens, it will allow Era to catch up. Tiny is not exactly the the fastest, you know, flash farmer if he doesn't have mana, which he won't have mana. But uh, he's he's getting some waves. No tells waiting in the tree lines. An aggressive observer what has got planted down there by PPD. 
So you can see up towards that high ground. And PBD, he's moving in towards the middle lane. Now Hani with the totem stomp. Oh, the fish is going to go. He's on the other side of it for now. And they're looking to block in Arteezy. And that did actually work. So they throw out the ulti and the stun too. But they can't see him. And you can't kill what you can't see. Even then PBD, though, he's a little bit too close. Copping off with the Crypt Swarm. Arteezy comes out every now and then. So the real life pretend even Hani just evaporates. And they've got more support coming in. No-Tail looking to blink out. Um, he TP out, but now he just gets basically attacked up by Arteezy. Lasso dragging Arteezy down inside Roshan. He's not going to like too many people fussing around his lawn. And he's beating on Arteezy. Batrider will get the kill because of the Firefly. That's now three for one more. Back up in the middle lane. Era being hunted underneath the tier two tower. The cat is on him and a lot of damage flying his way. Stick chance will keep him alive. He's got Toss of Babel and they're trying to hit him with the poison. The attack from Mason will finish the job, but he cancelled his TP for that. Flame Break pushing him further away. And No-Tail, he can't keep up with him. Trixie blinks the wrong direction. The orb comes in from Universe, and that's a DD puck. Brings down the Earthshaker. They throw some sticky napalm, but that's four EG heroes who have the high ground. Fnatic will not pursue. Yeah, EG right now just have the much better early game fighting hero. Their cooldowns are much shorter. They're a lot more mobile. And as a result, the slow clunky heroes of like a lion, the Earthshaker, and, and the, the stone giant, or the slow giant, whatever, like they're, they're not keeping up. And these easy kills under the tier 1 tower, they will destroy the tier 1 mid as well. Right now, EG is up by 10,000 gold in 15 minutes. That's a, that's in, kind of a scary stat. Now, normally we talk about, you know, who's got the better carry, but when you're down by 10k gold, it's how well can you play catch up? I think Fnatic has a very good base defense lineup, thanks to Crypt Swarm, as well as Fissure and p perhaps the initiation of Batrider. So they mm. can turn on the high ground if needed, but, uh, but if, if it's they, not looking If they good. get caught out, if EG actually get over the stairwell with a, with a Tombstone down, right. they, they could just rip Fnatic apart. But Fnatic have to keep them out. Like, it's just got to be a fissure every single time. It's going to be a Dagon build coming out from uh, Universe, and I think these are the, the probably the best game to actually go for that Dagon rush on Puck. After your blink, you're already winning very hard. Uh, you know, the enemy carries are not even getting defensive items to Do start with. Do you think, like, Lion's his primary target? Sure. I mean, in fact, anything. Like, Earthshaker, if you could remove him before he casts his Fissure, that's a great... That's a, that's a great gank. Mm. The main reason why I said Lion is because this guy's walking around with stuns and Hex. It's now Dream Call from Universe. Dagon's on the Lion, and then he all did to follow up with the Rift. The arrow connects on Honey, too. The ulti is up for him, though, so Universe will melt to that. With Trixie getting a good last two off. The Moonlight Shadow again being used here by EG to protect themselves as Mason attacks in the middle of the, of the ultimate of Hani. And Arteezy sits on the back end with his freshly done BKB, ready to force down the mid, realizing Hani's uh, exorcism will now go on to cooldown again. Yeah, but for Fnatic, that's a great trade, a lucky one for them. Uh, they traded a, a core for a support. Uh, the, the unfortunate thing for Fnatic is that their supports are so poor. I mean, they're playing greedy supports already. Both of these supports Dyer's want a blink dagger, but because of Moonlight Shadow, they're forcing out a lot of early Dyer's game investment in terms of Sentry and Dust. And he, Fly has one, but he should pass one to no tail, but because both of these supports are so squishy that if one of them bursts it down and Moonlight Shadow's up, mm -hmm. they, they can't reach, go for a second kill. And that's exactly what we saw in, in that previous team fight. Yep. I like this from EG. They realize too, like, okay, you lose one fight, let's just move out. Arteezy's gonna move up towards the top lane. He had a hand of mice he had to use anyway. And then Flash Farms up to 1600 gold. Where would you actually go with Arteezy's item build from here? Did you want to, like, rack up the physical DPS? Or would you go even more slightly defensive in this? Um, I'm, I just want to go get items that are effective now. So Yasha comes to mind, speeds up his farm, speeds up his uh, base killing ability by having better attack, faster attack. I personally like S and Y quite a bit in a situation like that. Just go back to the point of the Dagon on Puck. Trap. Just kind of early mid-game items. There's a trap on bottom lane being set. Now, Mason thinks he's the one setting this up by putting himself so far out. But just the way that Era is playing is just so aggressive for where they are in the current game that you kind of know that there is heroes hovering around looking to jump in in the cover of smoke, especially Trixie. And this smoke's now wearing off. It's too late. If he can get himself to the other side of the tree line and not spot it out, maybe they still have a chance to make this work. While up on top lane, pings are coming out saying, why isn't SG able to walk this far into our side? There's a leap in. Oh, he got himself caught in the tree line. The Dagon, though, has already killed off the line. Now they're both actually caught almost in the trees. Universe that finds a way out. The arrow's clicked on Trixie, and now on Dying comes in. Ulti plus Tombstone, and he's caught here. He can't move anywhere because the Dream Coil holding him in position. 
And now Universe is able to grab himself a double kill on that bottom lane. That lion, he didn't even survive. This he's he's thinking maybe at one Dyer's point I can get level six to use my finger of death and then get revenge on Universe, but there's just no opening at the moment. Yeah, at this point that Dagon has won them the fight. I mean, if he had an ultimate orb on Puck, they weren't gonna burst down Lion before they even cast a single tower. spell. And casting a hex might have turned the tide of that fight, but Dagon doing its work, forcing out with two kills essentially, and a tier two tower. EG's not doing anything flashy, they're just making the better rotations, they're having the better draft. Here comes No Tail. I'm not sure exactly trying to do what, but uh he's, he's just trying to keep the creep wave off the tower for now. So they can deal with it a little bit more, because the tower is basically almost, in fact, it's uh, 16 points off being in deny range. I think it's just in case Fnatic will go and try and force it. Because Mason right now is looking so damn fat. What is, what's coming on the courier? He's already finished up his Maelstrom. 19 minutes in, having nice. drums, Ring of Aquila, everything. And why is Zai still capable of doing this on the top lane? He's so far up on the top. Mm -hmm. and, there's, and it's like, wh hang, hang on. Actually, can they kill him? With disruption, like Harney were coming in, you have to get a silence straight away. I mean, they probably can if they have two or three hero going for a Shadow Demon. The thing is, if you kill a Shadow Demon, that's great. You're probably risking two or three heroes in doing so, and if he gets off a Demonic Purge... The coming man here with the Moonlight Shadow, Tombstone down, Dagon working, Dream got to hold him there. And the Undyne just basically fists him down. At the same time, they lost Harney up on the top lane. And the SF being... Partially responsible. Zai is the one who takes the kill. I mean, uh, this match means a lot Dyer's for at least Fnatic because if attack. they lose this one and Alliance wins their match, I think that means Alliance is in and Fnatic is out. With Alliance, you never know. Yeah. And the big standing, we never know. So, yeah. Well, also the Dyer's Navi match not being here, we also would not know. Uh huh. Some details Dyer's to be filled out. Yeah. Trix is able to get the denial on the bottom tower. This Mason left it a little bit lower because he was just worried about that blink dagger initiation in. And right now, that much amount of gold, it, it doesn't phase EG. There's 16,000 gold in front attack. right now with only one remaining outer tower of Fnatic's to remove. How... At, at this point, Fnatic basically need, like, like, they can't even go for Roshan. No. Like we say, right, they need an Aegis more, they, they need the levels of money attack. from Roshan. They basically need EG to walk themselves into a five-man avalanche, into a five-man earth spike with an echo slam on five men okay, with a double creep that wave. One, Toby. All right. it's, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at potentials, man. I'm looking at potentials. I mean, I, I don't think that's going to happen because EG would not walk five. But uh, what, what can happen is perhaps, like, a pick. And Fnatic's going for that. Because the creep wave is so forced out... Um, the only hero they're looking to pick off right now is the damn yeah. SD. <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean much. And Shadow Demon's got a force app. He might just outrun this entire Fnatic gank he's squad. Tipping. Can but he get off the Scythe or the Yules? No, he's out of there. Nope. Oh, there goes that gank. That's a five-man smoke <laughs> gank. And uh, they're and, not farming. And double sentries, too. They, they just don't have the gold to make these kind of gank. That was a 300 gold investment. And none of them are getting farmed. Mm -hmm. And now EG will move in towards the mid lane. Final tower, which is already too low on life for Fnatic to defend. Dyer's and their fortifications only just attack. coming off cooldown. And it's not full. Cool. Actually, they say it's worth fortified. it for the tier 2 tower. The arrow is already having a bit of a surge. So I'll see no tower quickly, but Dyer's now Zai forced up. He almost got that disruption off on the Harney. But actually, I don't know if he was looking for disruption or purge at that point. I, I just want to say that I think at this point EG could essentially 3v5. Three of their heroes could walk up their uh, high ground fanatic and they would win a fight. I think all they need is a Dream Coil, a Tombstone on the ground, and a BKB Shadow Fiend going into like right click <laughs> stuff. It was a more defensive uh, one, like Lincoln Sphere and BKB on that right. SF. I mean, here's the thing, he's so far ahead that he doesn't need anything else. Yep. Like his, his damage comes from his level advantage. Like this, this is a game where the Pinoy build will work. I call the Lincoln's BKB the Pinoy build because that's all they do. Oh, so look for the 15 minute game. Harney, Dream Call on him right now. No tell. Waiting to fish around so we can hit on Universe, but he waited too long. The Dagon's already killed off Harney. Tristy last time we went back for the SD Disruption. He threw down the Sentry Ward, so no tell. He just tries to clear it up with the Echo Slam. He's got nothing left in his kitty to throw out here. Ira's doing some decent work. But at the same time, he's having to run himself out now. His combo is dry. Trixie's still here in the middle lane. Hex over on Universe. They force staff him away and then save him. And Fnatic have to go back up towards the high ground. That they was just lost a, two so quick. That was the best fight that Fnatic could have taken because they know the Shadow Fiend just pulled it up. So it's essentially a 4v5 without basically the greatest network Thanks. member. All 16,000 of them. 
Sun was too far away. Yeah. And they, they couldn't win that one. So I, I think Hani hasn't actually used the Yules to keep himself alive yet. He needs to ult and Yules and let his team distract for him. Can they get Arteezy? They really can't. He's got that BKB. They really need to lasso him back with the four staff available, which Trixie does not have. He's very close to it. If he gets one creep, the four staff, perhaps they could kill Arteezy under the tier three. But they oh, just call it GG. They call it before the fight even begins, wow. so 23 minutes, 30 seconds in. And now they get themselves the double stun and a follow up from Trixie with the Fusion. Uh, but the GG happens at the end of the fight, so. Sub 24 minutes, EG will take the victory over Fnatic. Yeah. And Fnatic, it. Ri they really got like it was outplayed and outmaneuvered. You, I kind of want to say from the very, very start. The one thing which looked really good at the start was the Bat Rider, mm -hmm. but he kind of like off, like because yep. then he like.